this professional paraglider was in the wrong place at the wrong time. She might have been prepared for extreme climates, but no one could be prepared for a storm like this one. In a matter of seconds, she was blown 30,000 feet in the air by freezing cold winds, and her body reacted in a way that left experts baffled. Hello, Storyticians. Today, you are going to listen to the incredible story of Eva Wisniewska and her deathly dangerous encounter with the cold winter storms of Australia. Many of us dream of becoming extreme athletes, maybe going skydiving, rock climbing, or paragliding. But who is ready to face the life-threatening situations that these athletes commonly face? Eva Wisniewska could be called many things, but weak is not one of them, and this story is not for the weak of heart. Today's story is about paragliding, a beautiful sport that lets you fly like a bird and see some stunning landscapes. But it's not quite as pretty when a violent thunderstorm forms around you as you fly, which is exactly what happened to Eva Wisniewska. Eva was born in Germany in 1971, and from a young age she was in love with extreme sports. Of the many options available to her, she eventually settled on paragliding. It became a central part of her life, and possibly her death. Eva loved paragliding, but she wasn't just your average flyer. She combined her talents and hard work to become one of the best in the world. Four years after she started paragliding competitively, Eva was already ranked as the top female paraglider in the world. She was winning title after title. All eyes were on her. She won the German Paragliding Championship, then the World Cup, and then another World Cup, and then another one. But even though she was winning all these titles, her ambition was far from fulfilled. The only title she had not yet won was the Paragliding World Championship. She was invited to the German national team and was finally able to compete for this award she had been dreaming of her whole career. For this competition, 150 paragliders from 34 different countries would be competing to win the most coveted title in the world. This was going to take place in 2007, but the plan didn't go as smoothly as the German team might have liked. In 2006, Eva and many other world-class paragliders were practicing in Switzerland. During this event, Eva suffered a pelvis fracture which left her devastated. The recovery time from this injury could cost her weeks, months, or even years. There was a very real possibility she may not have been recovered in time for the World Championship. Equally, she may never have fully recovered at all. Despite this devastating blow, Eva never lost focus and made superhuman efforts to get back on her feet and back in the skies. This was her life's dreams. Nothing would get in her way. She overcame her injury by powering through every challenge that was thrown at her. Everything she did, she did with passion and determination. One year later, she was back in top form and ready to compete in the World Championship. Her body was in peak physical condition and her mind was stronger than ever, and it had to be. She needed to be as strong as possible to survive what was going to happen next. Without knowing it, she was approaching the most difficult challenge of her life. Everything was ready and everyone was present. Paragliders from all around the world had trained for years, even decades to get to this point. The air was full of emotions nerves, excitement, determination. Paragliders had to be wary of many aspects when competing. Foremost of all was the weather and flying conditions. But on that day in Australia, nobody could have predicted what was about to happen. As a strategy, Eva waited until everyone was in the air before taking off herself. She had more than 100 paragliders leading the way in front of her. When suddenly, clouds started to form on each side. Most of the gliders were able to pass through, but Eva, being at the back, wasn't so lucky. The path in front of her closed. She was trapped in the cloud and started to lose control when she felt a rapid ascension with no signs of stopping. Hot air inside a growing thunderstorm sucked a paraglider into the highest altitudes. Iwa started spiraling down, an emergency maneuver that normally allowed her to descend at 20 meters a second. But the storm was pulling her up faster than 30 meters a second, and she couldn't do anything to stop it. Rising out of control, she crossed the 6,000 meter mark. She was close to what paragliders call the death zone, where there isn't enough oxygen to survive doing these high intensity maneuvers. It wasn't very long before her body collapsed and entered a hibernation state. Unconscious, she kept rising. Her instruments showed speed of up to 40 meters a second. After some minutes, she reached the top of her ascension. She had risen almost 10 kilometers, one kilometer higher than the highest point on Mount Everest. There she was, unconscious, freezing, and surprisingly, still alive. The wind stopped, and with the pressure so low, her parachute collapsed and she started plummeting in a freefall. She fell faster and faster, 
almost reaching terminal velocity of 53 meters a second, her altitude dropping shockingly fast, 10 kilometers, 9 kilometers, 8 kilometers, and suddenly, a miracle happened when she reached 7 kilometers altitude. Her parachute blasted wide open and she woke up. Weak and barely conscious, she started the emergency maneuvers once again, this time with more success. After 45 minutes, she was able to see the ground. She had no idea where she was landing though. On the ground, everyone knew she was missing, but at this point, they thought they would only find a dead body. She managed to land safely, but her phone had no reception. Minutes later, the ground team received a text from her with her coordinates. They had to travel for 20 kilometers to reach her location. When they found her, she was alive, but in a bad way. They rushed her to hospital where her life was saved. Believe it or not, Eva was back in the air just weeks after the accident. What do you think? Is she too stubborn to quit or is she a real fighter? Was she lucky or was there a reason for her survival? With this, today's story ends. If you're anything like us, you're already itching for another story to hear. You will love this one. A teenage fugitive goes into poverty, becomes a con artist, fools the FBI and steals millions of dollars. Crazy true short story. If you like what we're doing here, please consider becoming a storytician by subscribing to this channel. Now, keep writing the most interesting of all stories, the story of your life. See you next time.